What's up YouTube, my name is CJ and today we're going to be taking a look at a 1995 Plymouth Grand Voyager Cross Country Edition by Glavel. Whew, that is a mouthful. <laughs> so, this is my daily driver, or was my daily driver. I just recently upgraded. Video coming out on that soon, hopefully. These are pretty rare now. Um, you can't find them with the high top. I've only seen like three or four other high top ones. So these are cr quite rare. This one is not in perfect shape. It's got 117,000 on the clock. It's got rust on the rockers and on the doors and you know, just everywhere that you know, these typically had. We did a fuel rail fix for these. This is one of the killers of these vans. So if you're going to look at one, this is something you need to look out for if you're getting the 3.3 or the 3.8. They both share the same basic um, architecture. Now the 3 liter Mitsubishi didn't have many issues. I think all the, the only issue was like the timing belt or the timing chain. I forget which one it uses. That's terrible. This is the better transmission. It's the 4 speed. The 3 speed was a good transmission. They were built well, but they're just slow as crap. The three liter was a great motor, but they paired them mostly to the three speeds. Now I have seen a few um, 3.0, four speeds on the minivan group that I'm on, and those are pretty cool. They do get up pretty well and they're easy to mod. So if you are looking at a three liter, make sure you get the four speed. If you want be the best fuel economy and the best acceleration. So I'll give you a look at the gauge cluster here, just so you can tell I'm being truthful about the mileage. I mean, for how old this is, it is pretty low mileage. So, and this is also the gauge package. You could get either a digital, a basic, with all it had was a speedo, gas gauge, and a temperature gauge. Didn't even have a tack. But this is the nicer one, this is all analog. I really would like a digital dash, but like I said, I just upgraded. This is going to be passed on to my brother, and he's going to start driving it. So, you know, hopefully that goes well. <laughs> so, we'll go ahead and turn the key to accessory. Well, that's not accessory, that's on. So, and you can see the gas gauge comes right on. All the gauges work. The only things that don't work are the locks, the power locks, and the rear windows trying to think of what else. I think that's it. So, pretty nice example. Like I said, it's got rust. We'll go ahead and start it up. The transmission does slip in this. Most of these do. I even think our 3 liter did. But it's not bad enough that, you know, you can't drive it. So you got your AC and heat controls here. This is the rear fan speed for the rear heat and AC. The rear heat and AC was an option, and thank goodness this has it. It was really nice when we went on road trips. This was my family's daily, but we have since upgraded, so that's why it got passed down to me. So you've got your overdrive off. That's an, a way you can tell if it's got the four speed. And then the other way is the drive selector. So the three speeds only had D... 2L, um, D21, and they didn't have a little ring around D, it was just D. The way to tell these is the circle around the D and then the 3L. So you get the picture. And so then you got your headlight switches. These are your daytimes, headlights, and then your cautions. And then up here is where it'll show up. Yeah, I can get a better picture. There we go. And that's where your all your basic information is. That's why they call it the info center. Duh. And then you've got your dimmer here, trunk switch, your hood release, and then your brake. The brake, if you're um, a little bigger like I am, it will kind of rub your foot if you're, you know, have your foot in a certain position. But it's not too bad. I would road trip this personally. 
I wouldn't, I'd be alright driving this like six, seven hundred miles, no problem. I'd probably want to make sure I have plenty of fluids with me, but I always do. So we'll go around to this side now. Look in here. So you got CD storage here. Or cassette. Then in here, this was a an option, not the... Um, so they had a cooler in here, got your seat controls there, and all these did was tilt and move back and forth. That's it. I think the town and countries, they had power, but I can't remember that for sure. So back here, you've got your AC vents are always there. And the bottom is strictly heat. So look up in the interior. As you can see, it's wood paneling. And then it's got mood lights. You've got jacks for your headphones. And then your TV speaker. It did have a speaker for just the TV. And then we'll look at the star of the show. If you had this van when you were, you know, 90s kid, you were the coolest guy on the block. So it got, it's got a TV. Originally it had a VCR and then a cassette player here. Like I've said, my family would road trip this, so my dad, we needed something a little more modern. So we put a CD player in a digital converter box so we can watch TV on the go. Well, TV stations, you have to be at a stop. But CD, you could play on the road. And then you got um, DVD, you could play on the road. And then you got CD and AM, FM. The radio only plays through those jacks. Then we'll go around to this side, and you can see the little speaker there. And then you also had reading lights as well. And then you got a back shelf on there, which is very useful for keeping jumper cables. There's a funny story um, about when I was driving this. My brother is over there laughing at me right now. I'm not driving it! <laughs> He's not happy. <laughs> so, but overall... I would definitely recommend, if you're in the market for a minivan, you don't have much money, I would try and find one of these. These are my favorite gens, other than, I think it's the 5th or 6th gens. Those are pretty sweet, and those get better fuel economy. I'm averaging 20, 21 mixed highway city driving. It gets really bad if you're in town. Like I said, you know... 27, 26, 27 years old, you're going to have that. I think it's actually 27 because they had the, they made these in 96. I can't remember for sure. So I also had to clean out the throttle body. Um, that's any car. You have to do that. And the other nice thing is these are cable driven. The one thing I don't like about the fifth and sixth gen vans is that it's an electronic gas pedal. Why is that bad? Well, there's computer delay. It was really, really bad the last time I was driving our 2012. I put my foot probably like, you know, I don't hot rod it most of the time. But I had it... Shut up. I had it about um, one-third, two-thirds in um, throttle. And it literally took five seconds for it to kick. And by that time, I had already let out of it. And it just downshifted, and it revved up to 5,000. Super stupid design, and it's supposed that's the way they were. That one's got 70,000 on the clock. That's that's just the way they are. So, hope y'all enjoyed this look around my my baby. Uh, I'm gonna hand her off to my brother now, but she drives, runs great. And if you're in the market for a cheap mode of transportation, you don't care about looks, or you do like the way these look then I would recommend looking. Like I said, you probably won't ever see another one like this. So buy them while they're cheap. Who knows, maybe they'll go up in value. I don't know. But this is CJ Explains with a look around my Plymouth Voyager. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye.